Welcome to Global Financial Data. My name is Kevin, and I appreciate you joining me today as I take you through a brief tutorial on the GF database, Global Financial Data's cornerstone global platform. First, if you haven't done so already, you may visit us at www.globalfinancialdata.com to create your account. I'm simply going to select the New Member tab and choose what account is applicable to me. If I simply want a trial account, which will allow me to view all of the different series that we have to offer, I'll select trial. For our, our existing subscribers, I'll choose the account type that fits me. If it's a commercial account, I'll select business. And if I'm a student or a professor of the university, I'll select academic. Once I've gone through the prompts, it's going to generate an email with the password and my login information. From here, I'll select login. Enter my login details, which will simply be my email address or whatever password I've chosen when setting up my account. Now, once we've logged in, you're going to notice that it's going to allow us to search within various databases. So today, we're just going to be covering search functionality in the GF database, but in subsequent videos, we'll discuss U.S. stocks database, U.K. stocks database, the real estate database, amongst others. So for today. We'll simply log into the GF database, which will bring us to our search engine within the GF database. Getting started, the keyword search may be the best place for you. If you have a specific series in mind, you can simply enter in any title. Perhaps you're looking for a series such as gold. You just want the price of a gold contract. I can enter gold, and what it's going to do is give me all the series that contain gold. I could also use start with, exact match, etc. I could also look by the exact symbol, which is the file name that GFD has used to describe their series, or by identifiers, which become pertinent, particularly when you're looking at single securities. So for now, I've searched gold, and you'll note that on the bottom here, I have 18 pages of results with 340 individual time series. Now, that can be a little ominous to go through 340 results, so one thing I can do is I can click to download this list to Excel, which will give me some high-level detail on all of the series within the GF database. So from this spreadsheet, I can look at pertinent details such as the start and end dates on a series, the name of a series, sort by country, etc. It just gives you a little bit better detail on what I'm looking for rather than simply having to go through all the different search results. Now, you'll note that we've sorted it by top GFD downloads first. What that tends to do is give us the most relevant time series uh, for whatever search term we're using because they've been downloaded the most by our current subscribers. You may also choose to sort alphabetically if you have something in mind that you know the exact name of. The other way to search would be by using our filter search, which we'll dive into a little later. But for now, We'll simply choose the keyword search as our example, and we'll go from there. So you'll notice on this page that all the columns are actionable, meaning I can click on them to sort by anything in these top columns. A name, by symbol, by country, even by series type, or date range, if I know that I want to look at the oldest data we have. Now for the sake of example, let's try another keyword search. So let's say I'm looking for the S&P 500, but I'm not exactly sure where to find it. So I'm just going to enter in S&P 500 in the keyword search, click search, and what I'll get is 551 results on the S&P 500. So again, if I wanted to look a little bit further as to what the underlying data sets that we've searched for are, I can download this list to Excel. But for now, Let's assume that the first series, the S&P 500 total return is what we're looking for. Or for better illustration, why don't we just choose the S&P 500 composite. Now, to get some more details on this series, you'll see that it gives us the file name, the title, as well as the date range. I can click into it, which will produce a little more detail behind the series for me. So when I click into it, what's going to default? is a visualization of the data, which defaults to two years. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the full history so I get a good idea visually as to what the underlying data looks like. 
So as long as I'm happy with this data set, seems to look like what I'm looking at, I can then come into this description to get a little more information on the series. So you'll see that we have pertinent information in here, start and end date, the periodicity of the data. Some of our data sets will change from monthly to weekly to daily, depending on the granularity of the data sources we can find. Uh, other pertinent information in here as well, if you're looking for. In the description, we also have been very comprehensive in including our source information for you. Remember, GFD only uses primary sources. We include all of our sources for your review. So you always know where this long-term data is coming from. Now, if I just want to download this one data set, I can click into the Download Data tab, which is going to allow me to make some adjustments to the data set prior to downloading. You'll see the date range. I can change up here. Perhaps only data from 1900 to the present is pertinent. So maybe I'll choose that. Data fields, I could select open, high, low, close, close only. And then I can make a few adjustments. Certain adjustments like inflation, which are going to are going to change the data based upon the CPI for the underlying country. In this case, we would use our long-term U.S. CPI to make the inflation adjustment. Uh, total returns will become pertinent when looking at individual securities, which factor in splits and dividends and other corporate actions. And I could just look at period percentage change, average, whatever I'm trying to do with the data. Identifiers, I'll just choose to have them all. And then currency, if I want to see this data set in a different currency, I could do so by choosing one here. This becomes powerful when I'm looking at a bunch of different data series from different countries and different time periods, as all of these currency adjustments will be made directly from GFD's long-term FX rates, which produces a nice apples-to-apples -apples adjustment or look at the data, particularly over centuries, where you have a lot of different devaluations in currencies and a lot of different historical events that might have affected the way the prices looked. Data frequency, this will default to our highest level of data. I'll keep it on daily, but perhaps I only want to see an annual series. And then date format, simply American or European. So once I've selected everything that I want to see, again, we're downloading the data from 1900 to the present, I can simply select my file type and output format here. It's going to default to Excel 2007, which seems to work for me fine. And I'll go ahead and download. Now, once the data is downloaded from our servers, we're going to have a simple spreadsheet that gives us a good idea as to how the data looks. So on the first tab of the spreadsheet, it's just going to give you some basic details as to what we've downloaded. It'll show you exactly what we've done in terms of adjustments, too. So it's important to look at that. When I click into the price data, this is going to be the actual raw prices from the S&P 500 that I'm most likely going to want to use. So you'll see we start our date range in 1900, and we'll go all the way to the present. Today's date, June 30th. So you'll see that we've also made adjustments for inflation. So here you have the actual figures from that specific date and time, the open, high, low, close. And from here, you have the real open, real high, real low, and real close which are inflation-adjusted figures based upon U.S. CPI. So if we're looking to use those, this would be our data set. So relatively simple if you want to download one data set from doing a keyword search. What we'll cover in subsequent videos will also be our GFD Auto Track, which is our workbook feature for downloading multiple series into the same spreadsheet. So if you're doing a project that requires a lot of data, please visit our site and download the GFD Auto Track video, which will help you through that as well. Now, the keyword search works well, but only if you have something specific that you're looking for. Perhaps you're not sure what the underlying composite or you know what a fixed income instrument might be called in a given country. So the keyword search may not be applicable at that point. Now, what you can also use is our GF database filter search. First, you may select the country you want to see. You'll note that we have over 200 countries that we cover here, some which don't even exist anymore due to our long-term data. And we also have put in these regional buckets, different buckets based upon 
OECD, high income, low income, etc. So you can look through these to get an idea. You know, perhaps I'm just doing a project on the Eurozone and one of these would be applicable, or maybe I only want to look at emerging markets, developed markets, etc. So for the sake of exercise, we'll just select them all, keep them all in there in case we're doing a long study. Now, series group, this is really where you can, can dumb down the data. For example, if I look at asset allocation, I can take it a step further and go into the series type to show me exactly what's in the asset allocation database. So down here, you'll see that we have all of our total returns on bills, bonds, and stocks, including the asset allocation. If I wanted to look at commodity, I could do the same by selecting commodity and then choosing the type of commodity series I'm looking for. So by going through these general buckets, you can actually get to the type of series you're looking for rather easily without having to know the keyword, the name of the series, etc., which will allow you to go through our database a little bit quicker. So before we had used S&P 500 as our example, why don't we get to the S&P 500 by using the filter search? So what I would do is let's assume I am looking for the S&P 500. I know it's a U.S. series. And I know it's going to be an equity series based upon what it is. So if I come into series group equity, I'll then go to series type, and I can choose either an intraday series, a sector indice. But I'm just going to choose composite, as I know the S&P 500 is composite index. The other thing I could add is a start and end date if I only need data that's going to be relevant to a date range, let's say the 1850s, 1920s, whatever it may be, I can input that to narrow down the data a little further. So once I've picked United States equity stock indices, I'll run a search, which will give me all 88 composites that we currently cover on the U.S. You'll see that the S&P 500 is going to be the first one that presents itself, followed by the NASDAQ, and then the Dow Jones. So there's a few ways to get to it. I could have used the keyword search, but by using the filter search, I didn't necessarily have to know the title of the series in order to get to it. So another example, let's assume I'm just looking at the G20 countries and I want to get all government bond yields for G20 countries. What I can do then is I could come into I could come into the series group fixed income. And then I could take it a step further and say, you know what, show me only government bond yields for G20 countries. I'll run a search here, which will give me 676 results. So again, I could download the list to Excel, which would give me a little bit more detail on these various series, or perhaps I see what I'm looking for. Now, if this search is a little too general, what I could do is enter in a keyword here. Let's say I'm only looking for 10-year bonds. I don't want to see five-year, I don't want to see two-year, whatever it may be. I could put in 10-year to narrow down our search even further and see all the 10-year results. So from there, I get 35 results, much more, it's a much easier uh, data set to work with for only two pages worth 35 results than it would be to look at 686. So I can simply go through these, I can hover over to get some, some applicable underlying information on the series, look at the date ranges, etc. And again, once, I've, once I see the file that I want, I could actually, if I want to look at it, I could click into it, or I could simply click the data tab, which will bring us to the adjustments and pertinent information prior to downloading that we can use. Again, a description on it. We have the graph. We also have the yield curve information for all fixed income series. And then download data, which if we'd like to, we can go through the same ex exercise, or perhaps I just want to see all the data. I can just go ahead and download it. So again, what we've covered so far is basic use of the keyword search engine and also basic use of the GFD filter search. As you get comfortable with the GF database and where everything is located, I do recommend using the filter search because as you understand what's in all these underlying series groups, 
you can really get to the type of series you're looking for rather easily by simply selecting the countries you want to include, the series group, and then the, the type of series you want to see. So if it's just consumer price indices, globally, I'm going to select economic, consumer price indice, hit a search, and that's going to give me all my different results. And then, of course, I can narrow it down by either choosing the countries I want to see. Perhaps I'm only looking for Belgium. Run a search. And that will narrow it down even further. And you'll see the six results I get. The earliest series going to 1462 on Belgium CPI. So as with this and anything, you may submit any questions you might have to sales at globalfinancialdata.com. And we'd be happy to take you through a tutorial as to how to better use our platform. And also, please visit our website, download the other videos, and take a look at the other various parts of our search engine, our platform, things like GFD AutoTrack, GFD Graphs, which will better get you acquainted with using the GF database. I thank you for your time today, and I hope you look forward to using the GF database.